At the click of a button, we can populate the sky in any of our levels with a beautiful, completely random sky of clouds. And this video is going to break down exactly how we do it and what sort of parameters we can change for every single level. So if you're interested in wondering how it works or want to use something similar for one of your projects, I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of every single step of how exactly this system works. So to start off, we have only six different meshes for our clouds. Um, these are just models. I modeled these in Maya, and they're extremely low poly and very simple, literally just clusters of spheres. I tried to give each one a sort of organic shape and a little bit of a unique look. And then from there, we will use this system to make it seem like an infinite number of random clouds. So the cloud generator all takes place inside of one singular blueprint, which is this one right here. The only actual component I have on it is a singular bounding box. Now this bounding box is going to be the space that your clouds can exist within. Uh, so in this level, I have it raised a little bit high into the sky and you can see it right there. I don't have adjustable parameters uh, within the editor right now, but inside the blueprint, you can change the scale of your bounding box to whatever you want. This one is currently set to 6,000 by 6,000 by 500. So from there, we get into the actual blueprints. Um, this is everything we're gonna be going over today. Don't worry, these three things are sort of just the same thing uh, in three different variations. So I'm gonna get jump right into that. Okay, so I'm gonna try to talk about this as coherently as possible. Um, I'm pretty new to blueprints myself, so Maybe that'll make this more understandable, or maybe it'll just make it worse, but here we go. Uh, the first thing we're doing is we have a custom event, uh, which I've named Spawn, named Spawn Cloud. And that is going into a for loop. And I have a custom integer right here, which is just whatever I want my max cloud count to be. So this loop is gonna do it over and over and over again until I hit my max cloud count. So that's perfect for being able to choose do I want 100 clouds? Do I want 1,000 clouds? Do I want 10 million clouds? Whatever. That feeds into the blue nodes over here. Uh, these are most of what's going on, actually. So right here, we have add static mesh component. This is just adding, literally, this can be whatever you want because this gets changed. Um, so right now, I have it as the small cloud number one. But this node actually gets changed uh, by this one set static mesh, uh, which sets it to a different mesh. In the middle, we have our material stuff, which I will get to later in the video. So we set the static mesh, we spawn the static mesh, and we set it right here, um, which chooses from what I built right here. This is a cloud array. Um, I just created a variable, and I searched through here for static mesh component and I found this guy, and then I changed it to an array in the top right. Uh, that's all that is. And once you create that, you can compile and it'll let you add elements. And so I just have an array of those six elements that I showed you earlier, which are just the six models. Those then get randomly picked every single time a cloud is spawned as the static mesh for that cloud. And then finally, at the end of that node, I have this, which is adding it to another array um, I believe this is also just an array of static mesh components. Uh, and this one is just called spawned clouds. So you notice it doesn't show any elements here. This is storing data on every single thing that is spawned so that I can use it for later. Now I'm gonna go back a little bit earlier in this line because this stuff is probably important to you. Um, so none of this is gonna work if you don't have this. This is setting the location each time as well as giving us some customization on rotation and scale. So let's talk about the location first. This is pulling the cloud atmosphere, which is just that bounding box that I showed you earlier. Um, and we are getting world location and scaled box extent and putting them into literally random point in bounding box, the most convenient thing possible for this. 
I am putting that node into a make transform node, and then that is going into the static mesh. So even without all of this, um, if you just do what I just showed you there, it will spawn those meshes at random points in the bounding box. So uh, just to show you this really quick, I'm not gonna go over the details because I'm not entirely sure how the math works myself, but this gives me some random ranges for the scale and the rotation that I can set within the editor. And that is the first step. Um, if you do that, you can click, you can put the blueprint in your world and you can set that custom event at begin play and then you can click play and you'll have some clouds. Um, however, there's a few different things going on here that you would not have access to and I wanna talk about that. Um, so first of all, I'll select these and assuming that you have what I just put there, um, you would be able to see, for example, um, in the right side in the editor, in the details panel, um, you can have your max cloud count, your cloud rotation randomness, and your cloud scale randomness. Those would be just about it. That's all we've covered so far. But they would be spawning randomly, and that's great. So next up is going to be the next tier of complexity, which is clusters of clouds. So when I'm talking about clusters of clouds, what exactly is that? Um, you'll notice that in my world here, there are a few big chunks that don't look anything like any of the other cloud meshes. Um, and they are adding a lot of depth to just the possible sizes of my clouds. Uh, so that is actually pertaining to two things, max cluster count and the uh, max cluster population count. So this is saying you're gonna have one cluster of clouds somewhere on your map. And this is saying there's gonna be 82 clouds in that cluster. So that, if I go into wireframe mode, is going to be exactly what this is, 82 meshes on top of each other. And although it's not exactly the most efficient thing, um, it doesn't really matter because they're just static meshes right now and they're not really degrading performance at all. So how is this working under the hood? Let's go back to the blueprint. So I showed you uh, my spawn clouds at random position with cloud atmosphere. Now we're gonna go to spawn cluster collision areas. So what this is, is pretty familiar. You've just seen almost this exact same code down here, but it's actually a little bit simpler because it doesn't have the material attributes that I'm changing. So what this is doing is it's spawning static meshes. Um, and this is a different array. I have an array of different cluster shapes and they're just giant chunks of clouds. And it is pulling one for each one of these and it is setting it to be invisible. And then it is spawning it somewhere randomly within the bounding box. So if I had them visible, you would actually see, uh, let's say I do, I'll set this to zero clouds, five clusters, and zero clouds inside the clusters. If I hit play and I go to lit, we have these big, crazy, giant things showing up on the map. Um, and these are those clusters that can get populated. But they don't look great on their own, so they are invisible, and I populate them with the other clouds, and it makes it also even more random as to what I'm actually gonna get. So the last main chunk of this is populating cloud clusters. This is gonna be almost exactly the exact same code as what we did with step one, except instead of spawning at a random point in the cloud atmosphere bounding box, it is taking the spawned clusters information and it's taking one spawned cluster at random and it is putting it into the world location. So it is spawning it at a random point within that world location. And that's the only difference. So I have random clouds, random clusters, and then random clouds inside the clusters. And I just wanna show you just on those things how much variety I can get right now. So for example, I could put the cloud scale down to one and I could do 10,000 clouds. Um, no clusters at all. And we'll just see what that looks like. 
It's going to take a few seconds to load because that's a lot of meshes. But holy crap, we have a lot of stuff, and it looks like one of the clusters did spawn anyways. I forgot to toggle the visibility, but that's totally fine. Um, so we have this huge, huge field of clouds, and of course we could toggle the shadows or something because they're not all rendering properly right now, and it looks ridiculous. But immediately, you have this massive, you know, spotted cloud sky, and you can't really pick out individual clouds as being duplicates you know you'd really have to like get in here to say this one looks like a fish and this one looks like a fish but um you know from a distance they look completely organic now let's say i want really big clouds i can go to my cloud scale and i can set that to 15 and they are all going to disappear right now um, because as this currently works you have to click stop and start each time but don't worry we fix that later uh, and you'll notice that that actually didn't work because I changed the parameter while it was running so let me fix that there's a hundred clouds at 15 times scale and they are these giant big puffy stylized clouds and I personally like the bigger ones a lot they're a lot more simpler and they fit the game better so that might be what we're using a lot um, we can mess with the rotation randomness and we can stop and start and we can see it just adds a little bit more variation and we can do all that and then we can add some clusters let's add four clusters and let's put 400 clouds so that on average they're getting that many but of course i gotta fix the visibility first so i'm gonna do that really quickly uncheck the visibility compile and save now let's say we'll do again four clusters at 400 total clouds and we're going to bring the cloud size down to five and see what these look like so there's our 100 clouds and you'll notice we're not really seeing those clusters as a huge difference uh, if i had to guess i'm going to say this is one and this is one we can check uh wireframe really quickly yes um and then there's one over there and one over there so you notice they're not really visible right now which the only issue being they're about the same size as the normal clouds so i can go ahead and change the scale of the clusters and then immediately you have a pretty big distinction between the cluster of clouds and the other clouds and i can continue to change that and i'm going to show you this button now which is repopulate which i'm really happy with so the repopulate button allows you to change a parameter within the editor and respawn your clouds now i just changed cloud color and it didn't work because of another thing which we'll get into soon on the material side uh, this really really pretty white is basically the material being broken um, which we'll get to later so next up is going to be repopulating so to add the repopulate function so that you don't have to manually stop and start every single time you want to test a different parameter, we're going to go down here and check, check this guy out. Now, we have an extremely simple system. It is a custom event called repopulate, and it is destroying all spawned clouds, which is the array we talked about earlier for storing data. That's so helpful. Wow, great. <laughs> and then we have a similar one for the clusters, which is the exact same thing. It's just named clusters. And it destroys all those components, and then it runs populate sky. And populate sky, if you could have guessed, is the event that runs at begin play, which has spawn clouds, spawn clusters, populate clusters, and color clouds. And if you set that up, uh, literally that's all it is, and then you can go ahead and click on your event, and you can check this box, call in editor, which gives you that lovely, lovely button down here. So I can do whatever I want. I can make my clouds absolutely giant, and I can make a thousand of them. And then I just have to click repopulate, and here they are. So lastly, we're gonna go over the material side. Now I did an, a tutorial on animating materials in Unreal, and I literally used that myself to figure out how to make this. So if you get lost on this one, please check that one out because it's literally how I made it, so I'm sure it will be useful. Um, but I will go over some of these parts now. So we're just gonna go ahead and go back into here 
And we're going to take a look at these three things. We have set vector parameter value on materials. We have that again. And then we have set scalar parameter. Now I have three nodes at work right here. We have cloud color, secondary cloud color, and Fresnel color, or Fresnel color, however you say it. Um, the Fresnel color isn't really a color, but because of how I'm using it, it is affecting color. Now Fresnel is pretty much this uh, property that if you were to look at a sphere head on, um, a Fresnel would be affecting the edges. It affects whatever is perpendicular to what the camera's looking at. So you can use it to get really cool outline effects in different like sort of tune shader styles. What I'm using it for is breaking the system because I noticed that if I crank it up to one, the clouds just turn to this beautiful, beautiful bluish white. Uh, if I put it to, let's say 0.01, like they're supposed to be, um, let me populate this. They're just kind of gray and crappy. <laughs> I haven't fixed this yet, and I'm just gonna say that. The the original material kind of sucks balls right now, but um, this over here is beautiful, and it's broken, and it's not supposed to really do this as far as I'm concerned. That's just the value being cranked so high that it like goes the opposite direction and breaks. Um, but it looks great, so I've been using it. So again, that's just in this material. Uh, I'll just go to it really quick if I just click on one of these guys and I click browse to material. Uh, I have the material and then I have the material instance and you'll know why if you go watch the other video. But in that material, it's just these two colors and they lerp between the Fresnel situation over here. And that's what I'm doing is I'm just cranking this value way too high and then that it's breaking and then they're turning really pretty and white and fluffy um so yeah that's the color situation i have that just plugged into these three nodes here and it goes set the color set the secondary color and set the fresnel color uh and again if you are having trouble setting this up you can go check out my other video because i do explain all of how to set that up in that one so Hopefully that wasn't too long winded or rambly, uh, but I'm just sort of excited because I have it working. Um, and yeah, then I just have all of those custom events running in this other event called populate sky, which is called at event begin play. Um, of course, everything that you want to be able to edit in the editor needs to have this little eyeball open that makes it visible in the editor. Um, so any variable you have can be changed from there. So yeah, from there you can do sort of whatever you want. I might make the cloud atmosphere bounding box scale uh, a parameter that I can adjust in the editor so that I can make it go much farther and much smaller uh, just from in here. I might add some void areas where clouds don't spawn at all using the same sort of logic that I used to make the clusters and things like that. But um, yeah, I mean, it allows you to do a lot with a really simple system and because again there's static meshes instead of anything volumetric or particle -y, it really doesn't take away from performance at all all it does is give you a tiny bit of loading screen time if you're doing something in the thousands of clouds so that's generally the cloud system i hope that that was coherent but I also just want to get this video out because uh, it's like hours before I want to publish it and I'm really trying to get it out. Um, so hopefully if you are in this extremely niche specific thing where you're trying to make a stylized cloud system off of static meshes in Unreal Engine for your stylized environment, then maybe this is helpful. Um, or if you are actually hearing what I'm saying right now, you're a ridiculous nerd and you watched that whole thing just for fun. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys have some nice cloudy skies in your future like this one. And I will see you in the next video.